Hey guys, today I'm gonna to show you the easiest way to collect additional custom data from your customers during Webflow e-commerce checkout. Let's do it. So right now in Webflow e-commerce, there's a pretty significant limitation at checkout. And that is that we are really unable to collect a lot of custom data from our customers that are buying our products. Now, Webflow does have this additional info module that we can drop in. Um, but it's it's severely limited. It only gives you three different custom fields and really two. You get this text field that you can that you can toggle on and off. You get a text area field and then you get like a basic little checkbox field. For most people, these three different fields don't give us enough flexibility that we need in order to collect the data we want to from our customers at checkout. So today I'm gonna show you the best way to at least have some sort of workaround that is usable. Um, and it's gonna involve custom code that I will have all linked down in the description below for you. Um, and that is essentially going to feed a bunch of different custom fields that we create um, in our checkout form. And it's going to feed that information, all those fields into this, um, this text field here. So at least we can then use that data and pass it through um, as part of our order in Webflow e-commerce. All right, so without further ado, let's get into this thing. Okay, so step number one is we're actually going to create the custom form and input fields for the custom data that we want to collect from our customers. Okay, so in this example, I'm going to be collecting, in addition to standard email, I'm going to be collecting the full name of the customer, the company name, the position, the nature of business, the phone number, and some sort of how did you hear about us field. Okay, this can be whatever you need for your unique workflow. If you want to ask what their favorite color is, this is where you would do it. Okay, so to do this, we're going to drop a HTML embed into our checkout form. Okay, so we're inside of our checkout form. So I'm just gonna drop in a code embed. All right, and we're gonna use some custom code to essentially create um, these form input fields inside of our checkout form. Okay, all right, so I'm gonna open this up and show you what this looks like. This is not complicated. I'll have this again posted down below for you. Now, if your form looks like mine where you have a label and then an input field and then a label and then an input field, et cetera, et cetera, well, then you're going to have inside of your HTML tags, label, okay, with a class associated with it. Now this class is gonna be unique to your website. Um, and then the actual text that you want to display here. So in my example, I have full name and then company name and then position, et cetera, et cetera, at the top uh, or above all of my input fields, okay? Then, very importantly, I'm going to actually have my input fields, okay? And so inside of my input tag, I'm going to give each of my input fields an ID, which is incredibly important. The class that is actually going to give the input field its style, this is going to be different than the one that I have here. Uh, it's gonna have a name that I don't think really matters much the type of input field, which in my case is going to be text fields. People are going to be typing this in. Required. And then the actual value that's going to be in the input field. Okay, so you can just copy and paste this in. Now, very importantly, firstly, you want to give each of these input fields an ID. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, if I go back to my email field here and go to settings, you can see that each input field has an ID. All right, so this email one is called WF Ecom Email. And I wanna give each of my input fields a unique name because we're gonna be referencing this later in our custom code, okay? So for my full name input field, I'm gonna name it full-name. For my company name input field, I'm gonna give it an ID of company-name. Position, nature-of-business, phone-number, <laughs> and how did you hear with dashes, okay? So each of these input fields is gonna have a unique ID. That's very important. Now you wanna name these whatever your data is. So you wanna change these in your code. Class, again, like I said, is going to be the class uh, that you're going to give the input field to give it its, its uh, styling, okay? Now, if you don't know what, the name, what you should name your class and you want it to look like another class, well, what you can do is you can go to the live site and I can go to like my uh, email input field here right click, go to inspect. And then I can actually see what the name of my class is right here. Okay, so I could literally just copy that in um, and update that here for my class. Okay, so you're gonna update this to change your styling. 
and you're going to update the ID of your input fields. Okay. Now you can add as many of these labels and inputs as you want or take them out. Okay. I'm going to include what six or seven here for you. Um, but you can change these how you need. So again, high level, you're going to change the ID of each of your input fields and the class to make sure that your styles are aligned with the rest of your site. Okay. That's step number one. Step number two is we're going to come down in our checkout form. And if you don't already have one added, you're going to add an additional info element to your checkout form. Okay. I already have mine here. And you can see, I have all three of my different options checked here. Okay. Now in my text field, I'm going to do this in my text field because I'm using my text area field and my checkbox field for other purposes, but I'm not using this field at all, this text field. Okay. And so this is the field that we're going to essentially feed all of our custom data into when we submit this order. Okay. And it's going to be basically a comma separated list or, or a string. Okay. So that's how we're going to pass with this Webflow default field. This is how we're going to pass our custom data through in our order. Okay. So to this field right here, we're going to give it an, an ID of add dash info. It's very important. You want to give this field right here, an ID of add dash info, and I'll show you why in a second. And then secondly, you want to come to your actual place order button, the button that is actually going to submit your order in Webflow e-commerce. And you're going to give that an ID of submit the button. So you want to click the button and change the ID to submit. Okay. That is step number two. Okay. Now step number three is we're going to add some custom code to our page. Okay. And this is the real meat and potatoes of the video. So we're going to go to pages. We're going to go to our checkout page, which is the one we're on right now. And we're going to scroll down and we're going to go not to the head section. We're going to go to the body section. All right. And we're going to paste this custom code into our page. Again, I'll have this linked out down below. So you can just paste it right in and make your tweaks. All right. So let me walk you through what's happening here. Essentially what this code is doing is saying when we click a button with an ID of submit, which again is our place order button that we just changed the ID of to submit. So when we click the button with an ID of submit, then what we're going to do is we're going to set all of these variables with some value. In this case, it's going to be our custom uh, data that we're collecting. So we're going to set all these variables and then to our add info or our additional info uh, text field, which again is this field right here that we just changed our ID to add info. We're essentially going to feed all of those variables and all of this data into that field. And we're going to set the value. Full name is going to be my full name variable, which is pulling in my data, company name, position, nature of business, etc. That's the high level of what's going on. So what do you need to do on your end? Well, this is going to look different for you, but firstly, and most importantly, every input field that we created in our custom HTML embed, and we gave a unique ID to, you're going to feed in here into these um, different IDs right here. Okay. So for me, I had a full dash name ID input field, and that is what I'm going to feed in here. Okay. So I'm just going to change to full dash name. If you have one that is favorite color, well, then you're going to change this to favorite color because that is what you named your input field back in your HTML embed. Then you're going to give that value, the value that your customer put in that input field, you're going to give that or assign that to a variable and you can name these variables, whatever, but you know, logically you want to keep them, you know, aligned with what you're collecting. So I have a variable of full name and I'm going to set the value in my full name input field, uh, to that variable. Okay. And so what you want to do is you want to just map these. Okay. So your full name variable is going to have your full name input field. Your company name variable is going to get assigned the value in your company name input field back here, back here. Okay. So company name, company dash name, 
equals the value that we're pulling in back over here, company dash name. Okay. And so you go down the list. If you have more custom fields than I do, then you're just going to add new lines here and change the IDs to whatever you've named your input field and then change the name of the variable. Okay. So you can do as many or as few as you want here. All right. And then the last thing we need to do is we need to actually pass all that info that we're setting here into our additional info text field. Okay. We need to set the value. So what we're going to do is we're going to set as a string, uh, full name, and then we're going to feed in our full name variable up here. And then my company name colon is going to be followed by the actual company name that we're collecting in our custom HTML embed and so on and so on down the list. Okay. So again, if you have 10 different variables and 10 different custom input fields, you're going to want to feed 10 different values into your additional info field as a string. Okay. So what you would do is you would literally just copy and paste additional lines and just line everything up. Okay. So it's that easy. Now we're going to save this. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to publish and then I'm going to show you how this works and I think it'll make sense for you. All right. So I'm on my checkout page and you can see all these custom fields here look exactly like my normal field. That's because we've attached those classes to them. But you know that all six of these fields are part of that HTML embed, which is kind of cool. So anyways, I'm going to type in my name, all my information, and we're just going to, you know, populate all this and, you know, put in some dummy information. Okay. So we're collecting information from our customers. All right. So I put in my credit card and my billing info. And I'm going to come down here and this is a required field on my site. So I'll just put something in there. And then very importantly, what we're going to look for here is when we hit this place order button, this is going to be cool. You guys are going to like this. Remember we have that submit ID on this button. And so when we click this button, that custom code is going to launch. And what it's going to do is it's going to take all of those custom data fields from up above in our, in our, uh, custom HTML embed. And it's going to feed them very quickly into this field here as, as a string. And so that way, when we submit this order, all that information that we collected will be fed into the Webflow e-commerce order or, or dashboard where we can actually retrieve this custom data. Okay. So watch this. I'm going to hit place order. Keep your eyes peeled here. It's going to flash real quick. You're going to see all that data pull in to that additional info field. Ready? Here we go. See, populates real fast. And then the order comes through. Okay. So we're placing the order. Perfect. We're good to go. And so then when I come into my actual orders right here, and I think this is it right here. Well, then you can see, I'll have to blur all this out because you can see all my address, <laughs> but you can see all of that info is collected right here. Okay. Company name, position, nature of business, phone number. How did you find us? Et cetera, et cetera. And so from there, if you're using make.com, you could, you know, uh, split that string by comma or, or colon or whatever you want to do. You have the data now. So you can either reference it here or then put it into make.com and, and, and continue to you know, manipulate it. Now, one last thing I'll do here is I don't want people to see this field, you know, populate like that. So I'm just going to hide this and then publish and then you're good to go. And that is how you're able to collect additional checkout data from your customers in Webflow e-commerce. If you guys like this video, go down and smash that like button for me. I'd really appreciate it. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, consider subscribing. That would be awesome. I really appreciate all the support over the years. You guys are amazing. If you have any questions, get down in the comments and let me know. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you guys so, so much for all your support and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.